Your merciful love, O God, we have received in the midst of your temple. Your praise, O God, like your name, reaches the ends of the earth. Your right hand is filled with saving justice. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. And therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Let us pray. O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy, for on those you have rescued from slavery to sin you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. When hunger came to be felt throughout the land of Egypt, and the people cried to Pharaoh for bread, Pharaoh directed all the Egyptians to go to Joseph and do whatever he told them. When the famine had spread throughout the land, Joseph opened all the cities that had grain and rationed it to the Egyptians since the famine had gripped the land of Egypt. In fact, all the world came to Joseph to obtain rations of grain, for famine had gripped the whole world. The sons of Israel were among those who came to procure rations. It was Joseph, as governor of the country, who dispensed the rations to all the people. When Joseph's brothers came and knelt down before him, With their faces to the ground, he recognized them as soon as he saw them. But Joseph concealed his own identity from them and spoke sternly to them. With that, he locked them up in the guardhouse for three days. On the third day, Joseph said to his brothers, Do this and you shall live, for I am a God-fearing man. If you have been honest, only one of your brothers need be confined in this prison, while the rest of you may go and take home provisions for your starving families. But you must come back to me with your youngest brother. Your words will thus be verified, and you will not die. To this they agreed. To one another, however, they said, Alas, we are being punished because of our brother. We saw the anguish of his heart when he pleaded with us, yet we paid no heed. That is why this anguish has now come upon us. Reuben broke in. Did I not tell you not to do wrong to the boy? But you would not listen. Now comes the reckoning for his blood. The brothers did not know, of course, that Joseph understood what they said, since he spoke with them through an interpreter. But turning away from them, he wept. The word of the Lord. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Lord. 
Give thanks to the Lord on the harp. With the ten-stringed lyre, chant his praises. Sing to him a new song. Pluck the string skillfully with shouts of gladness. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. The Lord brings to naught the plans of nations. He foils the designs of peoples. But the plan of the Lord stands forever, the design of his heart through all generations. But see, the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him, upon those who hope for his kindness, to deliver them from death and preserve them in spite of famine. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to drive them out and to cure every disease and every illness. The names of the twelve apostles are these. First, Simon, called Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed Jesus. Jesus sent out these twelve after instructing them thus, Do not go into pagan territory or enter a Samaritan town. Go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, As you go, make this proclamation, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The Gospel of the Lord. Have you ever noticed how sin tends to beget more sin? Much like investments generate interest, sin invests and generates more interest in itself. As we see these 11 brothers, these 11 sons of Israel, come before Joseph, we're told that first they go, they give him homage, and then they're locked up. So what lies must they have told? We know that they were caught in some sort of deception because Joseph gives, okay, here's your punishment. Bring me your younger brother. Now what's interesting is, why didn't they lie? We don't have a younger brother. He's our youngest with eleven. They must have been well known. The sons of Israel, the sons of Jacob, had to have been known to have been twelve. And Joseph only sees eleven and says, where's the younger one? And then of course they're wallowing and they're bemoaning their plight, saying we're being punished for our sins. And we know the rest of the story will play out thusly, that once they admit that we sold our younger brother into slavery, that once we got rid of him before Joseph, then Joseph, of course, will forgive them. They will be reunited. And so what's beautiful in this is how those 11 sons for decades had not thought about their sin, hadn't given it second thought, hadn't had any remorse, But it only lets sin beget more sin, lies, deception, dishonesty, and all whatever else. And it's not until they confronted their sin and admitted their guilt 
that finally they were reconciled, that they could be healed, that they could be forgiven. What a great lesson. Sin tends to keep us isolated. And it's only when we can confront our sin in that spirit of repentance and acknowledge it and say, yes, I did this. Then we can find healing. Then we can find reconciliation. The power of sin is not in its ability to destroy lives, but in its ability to isolate. Once we overcome that isolation, then we can be restored. Then we can be healed. And so unlike the sons of Israel, let us not wallow in our sins. Let us not spend decades just not thinking about it. But come before the Lord, seek His grace, admit our faults, and then find healing. Entrusting ourselves to the mercy of our Almighty Father, we bring before him our prayers and petitions. That all sent in Jesus' name may seek out the hungry, the excluded, the strangers, the poor, and the widows. We pray to the Lord. Lord that those in power may fulfill their duty to those excluded by poverty and need. We pray to the Lord. That differences of language, culture, and wealth may not impede the common good. We pray to the Lord. Lord that migrants and refugees may find warmth and welcome among the descendants of Abraham and Sarah. We pray to the Lord. Lord that the sick may have what they need and lack nothing of the care due them. We pray to the Lord. For those intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. That God may welcome the dead as well as the wandering and the poor, the first in the reign of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Almighty God, Father and protector of the hungry, guardian of pilgrims, you led your servant Joseph to safety, and through him delivered his family in their distress. Answer us now in our needs, that we in turn may welcome all who come before us, seeking bread, shelter, and care. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we receive the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. For the living God. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven. Through Christ, our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father most holy, to your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word to whom you made all things whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. <coughs> Son in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Thomas our Bishop, Eduardo his assistant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs through eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, 
O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. In thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostle, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and to graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you all. <laughs> Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Come to me, all who labor and are burdened, and I will refresh you, says the Lord.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.